untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Ooh, Bristling Hydra. I mean, I don't want to force energy decks each time, but Hydra's a bomb. Array would also be amazing. And then some good red removal with Hungry Flames, Welding Sparks. And uh, Thriving Rhino in green. Yeah, I mean, Array is definitely close in the sense that this goes into any deck. Hydra commits you to green. But Hydra kind of just wins games, so... Second pick. Uh, best cards are Aetherborn, Renegade, Privileges, and Skyskiff and Huntweek, I guess. Don't really see a reason to take Aetherborn over a Renegade or Huntweek at the moment. Renegade is fine, but if you don't enable Revolt, it's still just a one power Death Touch creature, which isn't all that exciting. I think I take Huntweek. All right, Tiger's good, but we can usually pick it up later. We have some pretty good red cards with Ether Chaser, Hungry Flames, and a good blue card with Negotiation. Might go with the Hungry Flames now. We did pass two good red cards, and we're gonna pass some two two more good red cards with Chaser and Parahelix. Negotiation can be kind of backbreaking, but you do need servo tokens to go with it, which isn't always trivial. Revoke privileges is okay too, but green white is a little bit less exciting to me than some of the other color pairs if we're going to go energy. Energy is usually teamer as opposed to green white. So I'll try the hungry flames there but uh, immediately regret it as there's no good red cards and there's an Aether Swooper and another Negotiation. I mean, we could splash Negotiation too in red-green if we end up with a bit of fixing. Uh, Swooper would have been nice too. Had I taken Negotiation in the previous pack, I might have taken Swooper now just to have a cheap way to produce servos. But now I might take Negotiation, which is a bit more splashable if we end up red-green splash blue. Or I could still end up blue-green splash red. And Hungry Flames is still a fine splash card. Yeah, that seems fine. Uh, Plunder seems good here. Works well with energy. Just a good two-drop in general. Growth is mana fixing, but kind of awkward. Can enable revolt, but there's not that many revolt cards to begin with. Uh, yeah, that seems fine. And then now I've got a few options, two good artifact creatures, as well as appetites, which I'm a fan of. So, I mean, I don't really want a negotiation and gift away the familiar. And it doesn't have a ton of synergy with our energy cards necessarily. So I might go with appetite over peafowl, just to make sure we have at least one appetite. And easy Thriving Rhino here. A nice sign that it's still here, seventh pick. Malfunction, playable, but we're more committed to green than we are to blue. P file's good here. And we wield Appetite, which makes me regret picking up the other one. Um. So we're committed to green, not super committed to a second caller yet. Uh, probably not going to play two Appetites main deck. Could take Eager Construct in case we don't end up with more two drops. Could speculate on an Enthusiast in case we pivot into black. Maybe if we open like a Winding Constrictor. Yeah, sure. And then take a Screecher over Aeronauts. Black seems a little open here with a late enthusiast and creature. Glad to see the tiger. So maybe we'll end up black green, who knows. 
Rush of Vitality, Decent Combo Trick. And a Lookout if we open Sky Skiff, that's a pretty nice combo. So black seemed open, green seemed open. And I've got two good blue cards and a good red card. I guess P-Fall is also kind of a blue card. So we'll see where pack two leads. Winding Constrictor would be a nice pickup. Any powerful green rares or black rares or blue rares. But we can still pivot into red if we open an amazing card. Well, I guess we'll pivot into red. Combustible Gear Hulk seems pretty good. It is at its best alongside improvised cards that have a high mana cost. There's also Daring Demolition, which, you know, would be fun. And also a great card. But I think I will take Gear Hulk, Hungry Flames over Demolition and the other black cards we have. And then anything we can hope to wheel. Maybe a familiar or artisan, who knows. Easy Long Tusk Cub. So it looks like we're red-green energy. Would have loved the Servant of the Conduit as well. Pinevolt Tower is like okay, but there's just not that many instants and sorceries to combo with it. So it's kind of difficult to generate a ton of energy with it. Cub just wins games if you play turn 2 and can back it up with more energy. Can maybe wheel a Wild Wanderer. And then now we'll take Servants. Seed Sculptor and Gremlins could also be fine pickups. Easy Rhino. I wouldn't mind the High Spire Infusion since we're looking like a beatdown deck. All right, got some options. Welding Sparks, Tiger, and Intervention, probably an honorable mention here. I think I'm taking the Welding Sparks since we don't have much in the way of removal. I guess we've got a few pieces here. But Welding Sparks is pretty good, even if we don't have many artifacts. And then hope to get more Tigers later. Take the Outrider. So I could use more good 2-drops and 3-drops, just want to keep the curve nice and low. Nice, a tune is awesome. Do I see a tune and maps as a land? Sometimes can kind of view it as a land if you've got enough, like for a tune at least, if you've got at least nine green sources then you can count it as a land reliably, but if you've got multiple attunes I wouldn't count each one of them as a land because they would make your opening hands pretty awkward if you draw multiples, but uh, yeah like 75% of a land more or less. So yeah what would be good pickups? Voltaic Brawler, Outland Boar, those are kind of the red-green gold cards, more thriving rhinos, and other energy creatures. Wield Artisan, don't think Goggles is particularly great here. Alright, I think uh, Seed Sculpture is pretty good. Just a uh, a nice 2-drop to start our curve with, and in the late game can put the counter somewhere else and still have it be relevant. Wild Wonder would be good too, I think I would take it, but I think the 2-drop is just more important for the curve. We have double hunt a week, so early board presence is important. And nothing here. Don't really want to play, double artisan, but if we don't pick up more uh, creatures we might have to play them. Ooh, what a spicy pack. Is there any chance we wheel the Brawler if we take Pummeler here? 
I mean, Pummeler's not amazing if we don't have any pump spells, but it is funny. Uh, Ether Seer would also be good. I mean, I'll probably just take the Brawler, and then we'll probably wheel either the Ether Seer or the Tiger. Yeah, we haven't picked up any infusions yet, which is kind of the card we need for Pummeler. Yeah, Brawler's just a bit too good here. Take Druids. Don't think we have much synergy with Chief. I guess we've got a couple Fabricate cards. But I think I still prefer Druids ramping out our powerful 4 and 5 mana plays. Uh, Fanatic, don't have any vehicles. Fireweaver, don't have many artifacts. But we might still wheel something useful here. Um, don't hate Crusher. Might still take the Seed Sculptor. There's also Monitor, which I guess is better than an Artisan at 3. We did pick up some 2-drops in the meantime, so I could see taking Monitor, actually. And then, if we wheel Crusher or Seed Sculptor, I'll be happy with those two. So Infiltrator's great with a vehicle, but we don't have any yet. There's another Druid too. Um, might still be the Infiltrator here. My curve isn't incredibly high, so it's not like we're ramping into much with the Druids. Don't have many mana sinks is uh, the concern. Renegade map would be great with Cavalry, but... Don't have many synergies with it otherwise. And Infiltrator's just like a good 3-drop. And then I can prioritize picking up vehicles. Nothing I really want here. There's a precise strike as a combo trick, which I guess I could take. But it's pretty weak. A rebel is kind of medium. Although a rebel honestly might be playable in this deck when we have double hunt a week. Don't think this does much for us. And then, man, that's a late Daring Demolition. And Rebel. Don't think I'm playing Hijack. Just as an act of treason here. But there's nothing else for me. Tampering could be a good finisher. Or there's another Monitor. Or I could take a sail back, but I'm really hoping to wheel one of those Tigers. Another Vengeful Rebel, more Restoration Gearsmiths, those are very good too. I think I like Tampering. Pyrohelix is a good one too. Tiger has got to be the pick. And then... Doesn't look like we're going to get any of those vehicles. Yeah, never mind. Crusher. Alright, I think we ended up with a reasonable curve here. Five two drops. I uh, can maybe cut one of the threes. And all my interactions pretty decent too. Yeah, I think one of the three drops goes, and it's probably going to be the Rebel. How good is the Gremlins? I do have a few Fabricate cards. Let's see how many artifacts. I've got one, actually only one Fabricate card, but I've got Gear Hulk, Crusher, Monitor as additional artifacts. I don't know, maybe, maybe Rebel's better than uh, Gremlins here. It is pretty good with Hunt a Week. I'm just too scared of playing with creatures that are forced to attack, I guess. And then, I mean, I could also make this a 16 land deck. 
because we do have a tune and Road of the Cowl as additional mana sources. But this is also the type of deck that wants to curve out, not miss any land drops, and then it doesn't really have a late game, so if, if we don't curve out properly, the deck's gonna struggle. Yeah, sure. And then 9 Forest to make sure we can attune reliably. 7 Mountains, don't really need double red until Gear Hulk. And yeah, we're just trying to curve out and beat face. Well, what we see here is a thriving rhino in its natural habitat, which is turn three. I think we'll uh, just offer the trade and then play Rhino. And then next turn we can maybe hunt a week. And it looks like the Rhino's gonna get destroyed here. I mean, I could still hunt a week, just doesn't seem necessary. And instead, I can decide between Monitor and Infiltrator. Tampering can also destroy Monitor for what it's worth. Um, next turn I guess I could manage the monitor and hunt a week. But Infiltrator could deal more damage. Yeah, sure. Play the monitor. So sort of regretting not playing the Infiltrator now, but that's okay. It's interesting that they're killing the Monitor instead of the Seed Sculpture, I guess that's why. I'm sad I can't double spell here. I want to keep the pressure up. All right, so hunt a week with seed sculptor means I can appetite ice over and then still get a four five. That seems good. They could still have some double blue cars in hand. Another one. Alright. Stays back. So... I mean, Tampering could just win us the game next turn. Yep, you got it.
Just gotta make sure to select the right mode. Well, bam. Red Whites, Ether Chaser. Yeah, I'll play Rhino. And then stay back in case they kill Rhino. We can still block Ether Chaser. Yeah, if they want to use a trick, that's fine by me. Don't really need Druid. gets to attack and could play Seed Sculptor as a 2-3 to block Aether Chaser. It's not very mana efficient, but I'm also not really in a spot where I'm double spelling. Or I could just curve out, play Monitor, and then if they don't have any energy, the Aether Chaser doesn't matter. They probably stay back with it and then next turn I get to kill it and maybe attack. Could give it mana and play Seed Sculptor, we'll see. Sure. I want to play a 3 mana card, so if I draw a land I can double spell. So probably means Hungry Flames, and then I can Hungry Flames the Admiral and just attack with Rhino. Ooh, man, this would have been juicy last turn too, but I'll still take it. Kills Infiltrator and Aether Chaser. Rebel attacks into Rhino. Unless they have a trick. Which they probably do. But I want to play it now in case they have uh, a pump spell. Alright, so now they can crew Colossus so the rebel doesn't suicide. Interesting. They attacked anyway. I mean, I don't want to block both in case of another Pyrohelix, I guess. If it's just like a build to smash or a build to last, I'll take that trade. So the question is, do I want to double block? But if they have nothing, I lose a monitor for free. Yeah, sure. Impeccable timing I don't care about. Yeah, I'll just single block. Uh, it is a build to smash. So double blocking would have been a, a double trade, which would have been pretty medium for me. So I'm happy with this outcome. Sadly, I don't have a great block on Rebel. So I might want to just kill the Rebel so they can crew Colossus and smash for three. Yeah, not drawing the fourth land kind of punished me here. Hope they don't draw a creature to crew Colossus, otherwise we're in trouble. Well, that's not too helpful. Probably playing the Brawler.
They're gonna tap down my land. Luckily, I can still play Seed Sculptor now. So this is crew 4, so they can't even crew it. Um, but they could double block my monitor. So I guess we'll just play Infiltrator and pass. Um, no two drop, but I think we gotta keep. Ooh, a two drop. Could destroy it, but I don't see a reason to do that now. Not on blue reds. Module's very good with uh, Warlord Virtuoso. Well, I speak of the devil. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that car is going to be difficult to beat. I guess uh, Infiltrator can attack, and they'll probably take it. But if I attack with the Seed Sculptor, they could double block, and then I would trade for a Thopter essentially. And then I'll probably kill the module. Well, I can still attack with Infiltrator, fine trading it for any of their stuff. And we gotta hope Double Tiger can get the job done. So they can still... Ooh, nice. I was gonna say they could still make a top turn and triple block to trade for Tiger, but now Appetite blows up that uh, situation. So we can punish a triple block. And if they take it, we'll just play another Tiger. We are almost out of energy. Assistance, when it dies, returns an artifact. So that can get back module. Flames can kill Virtuoso. So that's 10 trample, plus two, plus two more from Hungry Flames. So I can put my point to one, but it would lose almost everything. I 
I don't have to pump now. But I think I will. So they can get back Walker replay to gain three. But that's still gonna leave them in a pretty tough spot. Dragster. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. All right, sweet. I mean, this end would have been good with a third land. As is, we have a little pressure. Gear Hulk's pretty far from being cast, and if they kill my Infiltrator, my hand does nothing. I think I'm gonna have to mulligan. This kind of works, I guess. So I could bottom the Seed Sculpture since we have Druid on two, and then hope Double Tiger gets there. Or I could bottom one Tiger, because we do still need a fourth land to cast him. I think I go for the greedy play of keeping both tigers. I don't think one tiger is going to be enough. Hope to draw a mountain. Alright, I'll take my land now. Put into mono red, we're on mono green. Puzzle knot, alright, so they're probably red white then. Yeah, the gremlins is gonna hit pretty hard. And a rampage, wow. Opponent hits us down to 10. Yeah, I'll send both. Decline for now. Play another tiger and next turn we'll kill stuff. I want to get on the board first. Of course, if they have the same turn as last turn, that's going to put me in an awkward spot. Perfect, and we get to double spell. So both tankers get to attack. And since they trample, I don't have to. I use my removal first. And if I pump both, plus the two damage from Hungry Flames would be lethal, so... Yeah, I think we're going for it. And if they don't block with everyone, they're just dead. on the play, and ooh, do we get to lift the dream of a turn 2 cub getting out of hand? We even have Seed Sculptor and Rhino to put additional counters on it. So this could be great. Swamp into Poisoner. That's unfortunate. Poisoner is one of the few uh, cards that really gets in the way. So, I mean, I could wait until we draw removal, or I could just make the trade now before they get to make a servo, play Rhino, and hope Rhino can get there. Feels bad, but I think we got a trade here.
Well, if we drew the welding sparks a turn sooner, we could have killed the poisoner. Opponent might have a counter spell here, which is fine. And next turn we can double spell. Can turn into a 3-3 three, three if they sag the solvents. So, yeah, I think uh, Welding Sparks is fine for single black. I don't think there's anything that can go too wrong for me. And then, what 5-drop could blue play? Do I want to put the counter on Rebel or Rhino is a question. I think it's fine to put it on the Rebel. Just to diversify a little bit. Because next turn a tune means we can uh, pump the Rhino by one. Super sure. Brawler is an excellent draw too. Sack with all. And we can even pay for Metallic Rebuke. Alright, Extraction finishes off Rebel, that's fine. Six mana. For a monitor, and that's it. So, attack with all pump brawler, I think, is the play. So, voltaic brawler take action. Opponents at one. And yeah, my opponent kind of just got run over, despite the early poisoner to stop the cub. On the play, no two drops, but plenty of threes. It's gotta be a keep. And then lead with a rhino, which can get out of hands. Then we'll probably play Outrider. This could be a counter spell, I guess. Start by attacking. Maybe I play Infiltrator or Rebel. If they're keeping up Metallic Rebuke, and if they don't have Rebuke, they're pretty far behind anyway. Give them a Rebel. No counter spell. And then Hunt to Weak can maybe clear a path if they would have a good block. P Foul. Good Hunt to Weak targets. Ooh, and there's a Gear Hulk. So if I Hunt to Weak with Rebel on P Foul, two damage, they can't finish off Rebel with a token. So that looks good. One land away from Gear Hulk, otherwise we still have some decent plays. 
Right, glimmer to draw some cards, but they're not adding to the board. So if they don't have like a select for inspection here, they're gonna fall pretty far behind. And there's land for Gearhulk. Attack first so they can Metallic Rebuke me. Assuming they chump. And if they don't, then we can probably assume they have Rebuke in hand. Probably get to draw three here. Alright, we did it. We played our Gearhulk. Oh, opponent takes it. And they take 9 to the face. Well, I guess it works too. Ooh, turn to Long Tusk Cub. I'll take it. Have Welding Sparks for any blockers. We are on the draw, so it's not as good as turn to Cub on the play, but even have some energy to back it up. Black red. So they are pretty likely to have removal here. I could Pyrohelix, I think I play the cup still, and then Pyrohelix can clean up Chaser and the token. Alright, that's fine. Trading some blows. I guess we'll play the Rebel for now. Opponent stuck on two lanes, so we want to try and apply pressure. Screecher, alright, Pyrohelix is looking even better now. Poisoner also would have been a good Pyrohelix target. I think I'm fine Welding Sparking it. Yeah, if we Welding Sparks Poisoner, they don't get to make another 1 1 token. My alternative would be play Monitor and Trade, which doesn't sound amazing. The one risk is that my opponent plays a creature that can somehow block the rebel without dying. And we get punished. Alright, die young to kill rebel, fair enough. You know what, I'm actually playing servant here. That way I get to play crusher into monitor. Even if I don't draw land, and if I draw land, I get to play Tiger. Don't trust this attack, so I'll take it. That's a weird play, so they must still have another combo trick if they're killing my creature there after letting me potentially block. So they're attacking a 1-1 one, one into a 1-3, so what trick could it be? I guess uh, plus one counter, minus one, minus one makes the most sense. Or a build to smash. Alright, die young. I think they still have another trick in hand, but now I can play monitor and crew the crusher right away.
Oof, combustible gear hulk. So I could die if we just uh, take the damage, but I do have appetite to kill gear hulk. Don't really want them to draw three. So have your opponent draw three. I think we decline. Oh, no, we took nine damage and the servo kills us. That's sad. If we uh, didn't take nine, then next turn we get to Appetite, kill Gearhole, gain two. Crusher hits them down to two and we probably pretty easily win the game from there. Oh well, you live by the Gear Hulk and you die by the Gear Hulk. All right, no green mana, but otherwise the hand's pretty good. And I do get to play Parahelix and Hungry Flames with any land. Of course, we would prefer to draw Forest by turn two. I think the hand has enough upside that I should keep. And then one of our nine forests would uh, make the hand pretty strong. Would have been a little bit better on the draw than on the play even. Unless, of course, we top deck the forest right away, in which case it's even better on the play, because then we get to play an early Rhino. Alright, I'll take it. Array is pretty good, can tap down my Rhino. So we want to try and diversify our threats. Yeah, we'll wait on killing the Chaser for now. Pretty happy if they used Ira to tap down Rhino and attack, but I don't think that's gonna be their play. Hinterland Drake. And no attacks. So we've got options. I could use both removal spells here if I want to. If my opponent double blocks, I can punish it. So I think I start by attacking with Rhino. And then if they block, I can use removal. And if they don't, I'll play Tiger. Opponent takes it, and we'll play Tiger. Better to get the threats in play and then back them up with removal while getting in damage instead of the other way around. Right, goggles can go on the Chaser. Array costs two mana to tap down a creature. Just gotta try and preserve our advantage, hope the opponent doesn't have too much spot removal. Ooh, hunt a weak. That could be great. So I could hunt a weak using Servant of the Conduit to kill Hinterland Drake and then still use Parahelix if I tap Servant. And I would want to diversify my threats, which is why I want to put the counter on Servants. My opponent's probably going to use Pacification Array, but they could have an Instant Speed Removal spell, which would punish Hunt a Week. So... I could just go with Pyrohelix Aether Chaser first, see if there's a response. And then move to combats. Probably see the tiger tap down. Nope, taps down the rhino. And then... I kind of like using hungry flames here. So I'll go full control. Attack and then hungry flames before blocks. And I want to get the damage in while I can. So I will pay now. Opponent falls to six, still have a Hunter Week in hand. And hopefully that's enough to get across the finish line. Self-assembler, perfect. That should do it. Alright. 
so we got to win one game with our combustible gear hulk we lost one game to combustible gear hulk but we got to seven wins which is what matters so yeah early pressure backed up by some relatively cheap removal spells is a pretty good strategy in draft as it turns out did we even uh, play our hydra that game or that draft i don't think we did so yeah even without one of our pack one pick one rares we managed to get there so let's crack some packs War of Invention, I think I completed my playset now. Not a great first pick in drafts. Here I would probably either take a Tune or a Prism, just to keep us more open. Depala. I'm kind of hoping to open Depala at some point, so I've got an excuse to draft a Red-White Vehicles deck. And of course it's great in that archetype. And uh, Thopter is also great for the improvised decks. Judge, okay for the black green counter archetype. So lots of powerful multicolor cards. I'll take the wild card. Best rare in the sets. Oh man, there's a lot of powerful rares here. What comes to mind as being the best rare for limited? I would have to consult my uh, spreadsheet that I keep for limited here. Best rare, Gonti. Siphoner, Confiscation Coup, Etherstorm Rock, Free Jam Regent, Bristling Hydra, Rishkar, Depala, Best Cherry, Animation Module, Scrap Heap Scrounger. Those are kind of the top tier level rares. Yeah, it might be Best Cherry, honestly. It, it is a green card, so it's not a pure colorless card, but it's not easy to interact with, provides a ton of card advantage. So that's definitely up there as one of the better rares in the set. And we've just had a draft with it where it won us pretty much each game where we managed to play it and get to the late game. So that's definitely one of the top tier rares that comes to mind. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of powerful rares in the set. Key to the city, nice way to break a board stall. And uh, yeah, Chief of the Foundry, great early pick as well, especially in any green or white fabricate deck with lots of servo tokens. Hungry Flames did a lot of work in this draft too. Oh yeah, Aethersphere Harvester definitely has to be one of the better rares as well. That's a good point. Combal, Console of Allocation, pretty good too. Although pack one, pick one, I might go with a Barge. And Rage Giant can also have its moments if you end up with lots of cheap artifacts and kind of the blue-red improvised decks. And uh, yeah, Haste means it can attack right away, so can be pretty nice for those aggressive decks. And another Kambal. Here, yeah, I, I do like probably Kambal a bit more than Charger. But it's still pretty committal as a first pick. I think I would just go with a Meltdown. Just a flexible removal spell. Works well with energy. And most blue decks can make use of energy. Alright, we'll do a bonus Theros pack here. Get some gems. Pack one, pick one. Probably Acolyte. Zendikar. Pack one, pick one. And this one's interesting. Probably between Infiltrator and Bug Catcher. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.